Man, it is freezing here. I know everyone's going to call me a wimp because I'm from Georgia and it's like, what, 50, 57 degrees out. But dang flab, it, my, the, the heater broke just the other day and so it's cold. Hello, friends. My name is Mike Crocker. I don't know why I said my name. I never introduced myself. Maybe I should start. Maybe that should be a thing. My name is Mike Crocker and I'm here with a new video today. So it's around this time last year that I started really posting to this channel and a lot of the inspiration that came to do all that came from this uh, this YouTuber and comedian named Gus Johnson. Now, if you're sitting there and you're wondering who in the name of Tarnation is Gus Johnson. Gus is known for his very silly, may I say, sketch comedy. And you've probably seen sketches of his on places like Facebook and Instagram just floating around and other places where ripped off content seems to end up. Gus is one of my biggest inspirations as a YouTuber and a comedian. And I'd say arguably he's one of the funniest guys on, oh, do I want to say that? You know, you know what, yeah, yeah. Gus Johnson, one of the funniest guys on YouTube. I said it, quote me on that. <laughs> I'm literally going lightheaded from coughing so much. Ugh. Anyway, so for one thing, Gus has this way of striking the perfect balance between stupid and funny. I mean, I've been trying to replicate that style in my sketches since I started making sketches, and I feel like I'm just not quite there yet. I, I almost feel like it's one of those skills that you kind of just have to be born with, and Gus very clearly has been born with this skill. And I feel like a lot of other YouTubers, when they try this style, it either comes off too forced or too scripted looking, and it just doesn't hit the right way. And I think that's because with, with that style of comedy, it, it's really the commitment to the bit. If you stop believing in the bit, if you withdraw from character for even just a split second, it fails. And I feel like Gus commits every single time, no matter how stupid the bit is. Jesus Christ. Okay. No, you can't eat. And I think another element that Gus does that makes his videos come off really strong is that Gus doesn't it doesn't seem to at least put a whole lot of pressure on himself. I feel like a lot of YouTubers, big and small, are taking YouTube like really, really seriously, and that's not inherently a bad thing, of course, because you have to strategize at least a little bit if you want to see any kind of success on this platform. <laughs> but I feel like the way to do it is to plan, write, strategize, all that stuff to make it seem like it's natural and candid, or actually have it be natural and candid. Is anybody home right now? Anybody home? They're probably reading with the headphones on. Sanditor. Ow! I think I stepped on a penny nail here. Well, the varnish isn't dry yet. Oh, shoot! And this is something that Gus really just seems to have mastered. It seems like every one of his videos spawned from him showing out with his friends, someone makes a joke about something, and then someone else says, hey, what if we make a sketch about that? That's a video. I mean, look at his video called Potato Chip Boys. We make sure there's enough potato chips for everybody. Does anybody have any questions? Uh, mine is so many. Hold on. Well, just be a sec. Hold on, everybody. How, how'd it go when you scoped it out? I saw a, a one tiny little fun size bay sour cream and onion. Sour cream. I, I don't watch that and see something that someone sat down and brainstormed, you know? No, wait, dude. This idea came from... Ugh. No, okay. What if we got a roll of duct tape? And we got a bunch of vegetables. No. Bags of potato chips. And he does it in such a way that gets you 1.8 million views. If anyone else or most other people tried this idea, it just wouldn't work. Gus, how do you do it? Now, amid all these videos that are kind of dumb and, and very loosely planned and scripted, is another subgenre that he does really well that I'm going to call relatable, but in really specific niche ways and sometimes our musical. Nobody ever buys salt. It's always just there by default. Paper-based stickers can suck my dick. I try to peel them off, but the sticker still sticks. So I peel it from the side, but the stickers don't care. They split, they tear, leave shit everywhere. Yeah. Hey, did you accept my Facebook friend request? I have a really unique profile picture. You must have seen it. It was a photo of me sitting in my pickup truck with some sports shades on. It was taken from a very low angle. I was not smiling. Didn't see that one? I'll send it again. Today, we're going to be filming a dramatic short film about teenagers who have special powers, and they live in a dystopian society. Society. Like they're so hyper specific, but somehow I relate to all of them. I mean, <laughs> my my family is is fairly progressive and liberal, but I still somehow relate to the to the inappropriate uncle one. What'd you say? I just think it's a real heck of a skill, and and once again, something that you're born with or something you gotta practice for a long time to to really get it right. And my pits won't dry. I take a cool shower to try to stop the flow. I wipe, I dry, I dab, I blow. For this next part, 
I'm gonna make a little bit of a bold claim here. I believe that Gus is one of the stronger links between old YouTube and new YouTube. Let me explain. Old YouTube started at its creation and lasted up until about 2013, which is when Google Plus got integrated into YouTube. That integration has of course dissolved, thank God, but ever since then, YouTube has just felt a little bit more Corporate. Long gone are the days when random funny clips and animations would organically go viral. I mean, back then you could make a little sketch or narrative or parody or whatever you, it is you wanted to make with really low production value and it would still get views. Not now. To get views now, you gotta have a bajillion dollar budget and make videos that, that Mr. Beast would just come at. <laughs> or be formally Vine famous, or just have a Tesla. Has anyone else noticed that? It seems like any time a YouTuber passes like a million subscribers, a, a Tesla just manifests in their garage, and then they're and then then they have a whole series about what it's like to own a Tesla. How how many series about Teslas are we gonna have? Like Elon Musk and and Susan had this weird deal going on. I bet someone sold their soul to the devil. There's no correlation with that, Mike. YouTube channels can make a lot of money, and when people have a lot of money, sometimes they want to buy a Tesla. Yeah, I know, but still. <sighs> what am I talking about? Oh, yeah. So basically, videos that used to get a lot of views versus videos that get a lot of views now, they look very different. And I'm not necessarily saying that that's a bad thing. I mean, humor changes, culture changes, God knows the algorithm changes. <laughs> But YouTube, for all intents and purposes, has reached maturity as a platform. And if you play your cards right in this new landscape, if you design the hell out of a thumbnail, if you spend hours crafting a title that adheres to all the best SEO practices, and you'd, and you'd optimize your content and your editing to squeeze out as many of those sweet watch time droplets of nectar as you possibly can, you can make a lot of money. You know how I know this? I mean, it's certainly not because I've done it. I mean, look at my sub count. It's because every time I've ever even hinted at wanting to be a YouTuber to anyone over the age of 35, they say the same damn thing every single time. Oh, YouTube is crazy. Did you know? I, I bet you didn't know this. There are little kids that just play with toys in YouTube videos and they make millions. I know about Ryan Toy Reviews, David. Can you please stop bringing it up? My point with all of this is that Gus doesn't pander to these kinds of practices. I know this because he's told us. The entire time I was surrounded by industry professionals and other creators and people like that and it seemed like one thing was on their mind and that was business. That was driving clicks, driving people, driving numbers and not referring to things like creativity and content and engaging fun videos. I just want you to know that I'm not going to change my content for the sake of getting clicks and driving people here. I think the charm of what we have going on here is that we're just having fun. And that right there is the missing link between old YouTube and the YouTube we know it now. People uploaded videos not to get fame, not to get views, not to not to charge some dollar bills, but just because they genuinely like to do it. And as cheesy as it sounds, I just feel like that gave YouTube a lot more soul back in the day. And of course, people do YouTube today because they like it. Of course they do. That's why I do it. I, I freaking love doing this. And maybe Gus plans things out on a, on a business level more than his videos actually lead on, but he manages to have fun making these low production quality videos, but still be in favor of the algorithm and still has an audience that loves what he makes. That's like any YouTuber's wet dream, dude. And this brings me to the last thing I want to say about Gus. And I hope this isn't too weird or anything, but Gus is a wholesome old boy. If you come to one of my live shows, general admission tickets are going to be about 20 or $25. And if you get a VIP ticket, it's going to be at most $50 to $55. I'm really proud of this price point and it is the absolute lowest that I can make it. If you come to the show, it doesn't matter what ticket you get, you get to go do the meet and greet afterwards. I don't want to put the meet and greet stuff behind a paywall. I want to meet you people. You are the people that have helped put me in a position where I am today and I am grateful for you. Hey guys, Gus here. Today on YouTube, I got 1 million subscribers. One million people decided to subscribe to me over the last few years. Today I want to stop and take the time to look back and thank all of the people that helped me to be in this position, 
that helped me throughout the years and that impacted my life in various ways. Now obviously Gus isn't the only YouTuber in the world that cares for and is grateful for his audience. I think every big YouTuber has made that video where they have the thank you for the blank number of subscriber special video and you know they're, they're very heartfelt and genuine but and i think i might be a little bit biased here gus has just hit a little bit different especially his thank you for one million video i think one way it comes off so genuine like that is because for one he obviously means everything that he says but then also whenever he does those more serious more heartfelt sit down videos He's, I, I've noticed he does them all, pr pretty much all of them, in one take. And I think when you do it in one take, in, instead of editing it up, is that you, you leave all the little imperfections in there. You leave the little tangents and the stutters and, and the filler words and all that. And I think whenever you see someone in that light, it makes them look less like an entertainer and more of just a just a person that that likes to upload videos and to entertain people. It's a little nod that reminds you that you're not watching some little big shot executive producer in Hollywood, and that you're you're just watching some guy on TV that's that's kind of like you. That that might seem like one of your friends at this point. Once again, I hope this isn't too weird. This is just how I feel. In a way, I almost feel like I'm friends with Gus, even though I never met him. He doesn't know who I am. Um, but yeah. Um. Gus, if you happen to be watching this, and if you happen to make it this far into the video, thanks a lot for uploading, and thanks for the entertainment and the laughs, and thanks a lot for the inspiration. I really love what you put out, and I'm really excited to see what you have in store for the future. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching. I'm going to try to upload more than just once a week. Um, this, I know that th this last quarter of the year is when a lot of YouTube channels get a lot more views. The algorithm just seems to send a big Merry Christmas present to everyone. So I'm going to try to upload as often as I can, not really on much of a schedule. I want to pursue this a lot, especially in this last quarter. So I'm just going to do it as much as I can. By the way, we're the friends around here. So if you subscribe with no diffs on and you comment that you did so, then uh, guess what, buckaroo? You're automatically friends with me and everyone else that has done the same thing and who doesn't need more friends so subscribe with notifs on and comment that you did so and uh let's let's be friends thank you guys so much for watching i'll see you guys on the next one which is hopefully sooner than a week bye